everybody and you're very welcome again to another episode of the Empowering Family Health Podcast. Today we have Fiona Brennan and I'm really excited about this episode. Fiona Brennan is a mindset and success coach, a success coach in personal and professional development and she especially helps women, women in business and she does some project management as well around that. Fiona, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Joanne. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you Brilliant. for inviting me. It's great. great. So Fiona, tell us a little bit about what it is that you really care about, what it is that has you, um, you know, do what you do and what it is you hope to achieve and why you really care about it. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you, Joanne. So I care about helping other women really is, is what it boils down to because being a um, female myself and being a mom of three children, and working from home, I know and understand the challenges that all of that brings. I used to work in employment. Um, I've done 20 plus years um, employed. And a few years ago, I felt that there was something unsettling. I wanted to actually be with my children more. And there was a lot of logistics around it and I played around with it in my head for so many years. But it got to the point where it was, I was just so unhappy. And I looked for um, something. I looked for to see what could come up or what I could possibly do. And an opportunity did come up after a turn of events and that led me to start my own business as a project manager, because project management was what I had been doing for many years. And with the changeover from employment to being an entrepreneur, having my own business, the personal development journey that I ended up taking that I didn't actually expect to go on. I thought I could just continue to do what I always did, but just get paid separately. <laughs> but it's actually a huge transformation because it impacts yourself personally, it impacts your family, it impacts your confidence level, and you know the ownership of everything stops and starts with you all of a sudden when you take on your own business. So that journey then led me into looking for some support and help myself. Um, which basically where I found coaching. And I ended up studying coaching to actually help myself, to actually empower myself, to get me more motivated, to get me more confident, mm. to give me that something that I was missing, to also help me with the family structure because when you suddenly have been going, when you've been going to nine to five for so long and you know you've had a fixed structure in place and all of a sudden you're now trying to create a business from it was the kitchen table as a lot of people start from <laughs> and everyone's around you and they think, Oh, there's mom. She's available. It's great. And you know, it was, and Oh, by the way, what have you been doing all day? You know, it's what I would get at the end of yeah. the day. You've been tearing your hair out. There's all of that to deal with. So after about a year of a lot of, I suppose, anxiety and balancing and what the heck have I just done? And maybe I should just go back and start applying for other roles. Um, I went down the coaching route to support myself and from that I just started a journey that was just so powerful and it helped me hugely and significantly and as a result of that I realized that I could actually help other women um, create the success that they wanted by starting with this process of inner inner growth because it all starts with you and as it as an entrepreneur everything starts and stops with you because you no longer have the boss that you can go back to and say, oh, I messed up, whatever. You no longer have the, you know, the corporation overhead that will, no matter what, look, they'll take the brunt. It stops with you. So there is a significant pressure there. So you have to develop this worth, this value within yourself that, you know, will carry you forward, that will help you propel, that will help you sell and um, do the thing that you're good at doing. Mm. But also in parallel to that, I suppose, you know, living the life that you want. Because Joanne, I think a lot of us um, women tend to go into um, developing ourselves in our own business because we actually want the flexibility of the time yeah. with the family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just, we don't realize there's this whole other side to it that you could end up very easily getting sucked into not, not your nine to five anymore, but you're like your eight to seven or you're, you're suddenly in doing it at 11 o'clock at night because everyone's gone to bed because you're like, you've all this it's stuff the only time head. to get work done yeah 
<laughs> and before you realize it, this flexible lifestyle of having your own business and being able to go to the beach when you wanted to is not quite happening. Didn't <laughs> so um it's There's, yeah, I can yeah. hear I can hear in all of that um oh my god, where can I begin? But I really admire your uh, determination and going after your drive and what it is that you really wanted and knowing that there was a better way to do it rather than the, the nine to five and working for somebody but having that lifestyle that you could control and have with your children as well and your family and I can really hear as well like you use the word empowerment quite an awful lot as well and responsibility so we really are responsible for who we are what it is that we want in life what's important for us and I think um, we need to identify what is important to us what our values are to start off with and for you yeah that was you know having more time with your children and I think you know being a parent is probably one of the most responsible roles that we can have as well and then when you bring into that being an entrepreneur it just there's just so much discipline and um you know structure that it's very very difficult can you talk to us a little bit about how you structure your day how you manage your day around your children and you know what works for you that has you be effective at, at your job at, at what it is that you do okay so when i started it was um it was a january january 2017 when i started the project managing business so this was my first taste of being there for myself and um it was great because the school year um, with the second semester was just starting. So my structure was, I went in with the intent was, drop the kids for nine, and then you've got until um, about two o'clock, I think when the first one was being collected. And that was my time. So I had to schedule any offsite meeting had to happen during that time. Any paperwork could happen in or after that time. But once I had that space for travel, then my, what I really wanted for myself as a mom to be there for the kids was to be there for the homework, and was to be there um, to give them their food. Um, not that I wanted to be stuck into making dinners every day, but I just wanted to make sure that they ate well. And I wanted to be the one there. When they walked in that door, I want to be the one that greeted them. I didn't want a minder and I didn't want them to have to go to someone else. So I structured it around school time. And then activities, I suppose, in the evening, if they were off um, doing training, there could be an hour there where I could nip in and out. Um, now, you know, as I said earlier, a lot of that then ended up flowing into when they were settled in bed, I ended up doing a lot of hours after that. Yeah. So, and that's fine for the first few months when you're working off adrenaline and it's all new, but you soon, soon realize that self-care is huge and you got to pull back on that. Um, it's like, you know, when the, the car is starting, you can rev up for so long, but at some point the car is going to like, hang on girl, I need to go in now and get some diesel here and get it for the maintenance. Yeah. Um, so... The, bit, the first challenge, I suppose, from a time point of view, that worked fine until I hit um, Easter holidays, or actually I think it was probably even um, midterm break. And that was my first experience of, okay, things are just not going to be as smooth now. So I had to come up with another plan on how to manage the kids and my time during things like midterm, um, Easter holidays, and summer holidays in particular. And it was about sitting down and saying, okay, where, what, what can I get from, say, um, sat with in the morning for a couple hours, or what maybe if there was a camp coming up, or what can I get them, you know, involved in that will allow me to do two or three hours. So you adapt it to change to suit what's going on in the house. So it's not, you know, and the thing about it is communication to your clients as well. If you're doing work for people and you've suddenly been available from nine to two, it's about communicating out, okay, for the next week. You know, my flexibility is slightly different. So I can be available for a call, but I'm not going to be able to travel. So things like that. So it's just about balancing and seeing what's available. And you might end up doing more hours in the evening. You know, if you've got a partner there that can support you, or if you've got mm. a family friend or another family member who can support you to maybe do evening cover or something like that to give yourself a few hours. But I think the big thing was realizing that, you know what, it was okay to not have the full hour hours available during summer holidays um, as in a school year and just coming to grips with that mm. and letting everybody else know because at the end of the day I started it to be flexible so if you know being flexible was one of my um, I suppose key values being around my family which was one of my key values because life happens you doesn't know, it with the children <laughs> it absolutely does and you know if the child says the night before 
mommy, I'm not feeling well, that you weren't going to be going into stress mode, worrying, sugar, I've got a meeting. Yeah. What am I going to do? Knowing, being confident enough that you have, um, you know, that it's okay to just send a message and say, I can't meet, make this now and I'm going to reschedule. And just coming up with that flow and uh, that sort of, I suppose, pattern. Where do you see a lot of people where people are making mistakes? Um, you know, what's missing for a lot of people that's causing them to, like, have this attitude there's not enough time in the day because that's a, that's a common one there's just there's yeah. seem, and they're running around in a busy mess and trying to get everything done trying to look after the kids get their homework done take the calls and stuff happens as you say what what's going wrong what's missing with people that they're not um you know being adaptable they're not being flexible they're in this busy mess and overwhelm and they're actually getting nothing done they're actually getting there's no productivity they're actually getting nothing done and then they're going to bed stressed and they're not sleeping what's going on there what's what's yeah. people, what are people missing so what's happening there is a lot of times is that there's just a huge list of things to do and um especially for women there's a tendency to feel that we have to do everything ourselves yeah that's true and that nobody else can do it so it can be as basic as being stressed out because you have x y and z to do at work but you've also like A, B, and C to do in the house. But really, is that true? So it's about taking everything that's suddenly overwhelming you at this point in time, saying, I'm so busy. Like, I've just so much to do. I can't even see in the next five minutes. Oh, my God. It's actually just stepping back and getting a blank sheet of paper and just literally opening the contents of your head and jumping it onto the page. Yeah. So writing every single thing that you could possibly come up with that is, causing you that stress right now putting it onto the paper and what that does in itself is just detaches you from it so it's no longer part of you you've actually just detached it and put it onto a piece of paper Brilliant. now you can step away again and come back with you know a bit of neutrality and say okay what really is important on this list what's absolute priority and putting a few circles on things maybe What's absolute priority? What is something that only I can do? What is something that, yes, if I just release some control, because control is a lot of the issue, yeah. um, that I can actually delegate out. And okay, it might not be done to the end degree that I would do it, but you know what? We're not looking for A's in everything. C's or B's are good enough. So what can I give out to other people? What can I start empowering other people to take responsibility for? You know, how old is my child? You know, if they're over six, definitely. We've got to give them stuff to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> the partners. Um, and what's absolutely necessary? I mean, is it really necessary to do the bundle of ironing by tomorrow? Could that wait? Does it even have to be ironed at all? Could I actually send it to somebody? Um, yeah. Some woman who is in another house or somebody who's just looking for little odd jobs. So it's about looking at the bigger picture. I think a lot of us do tend to feel like we've got to control everything. And especially as business owners, it's even down to like, you know, there's a lot of virtual assistants out there. There's a lot of um, people who will take on a bit of bookkeeping, a bit of social media support. And it's about, you know, it's okay to release it, give the instructions, get to know them, you know, just send it out a bit. We don't have to do everything. Yeah. yeah. We don't have to be busy and busy is not a badge of honor. And no. There are no awards for the busiest person, do you know? Um, so it's, it's, you're not going to get... to me, it's, it's chaotic and out of control. That's what busy, that word. And actually, yeah. you know, when we use language and the things that we say um, can reflect how we're being, you know, and, uh, you know, people say, oh, I'm up to my eyes, I'm busy. And that's, that to me says that person is very chaotic and they're not peaceful and as they could be more productive. So, um, so yeah, so this busyness and there's not enough time in the day. And, and, and I think that the, the busyness over the last few years, I think even nearly since the whole Celtic Tiger thing, busy has become like that buzzword. Are you yeah. busy? Yeah, I'm busy. If you're not busy, why aren't you busy? Like, why are, what are you not doing? Um, we need to start sending out more words like that. You know what? I'm just, I'm fulfilled. I'm, I'm living, I'm, you know, doing a nice day. Mm -hmm. I'm having a good day. It doesn't yeah. have to be a busy day. You know, it can, there can be lots of pockets of breathing spaces and just being and just being with the kids and just being with yourself. 
It doesn't always have to have a big diary of work stuff. Your diary ideally needs to have breaks in it and little slots of um, space for just you, whether it's yeah. just to walk the garden for five minutes, you know, get away from it because we slow it. We, what is it? We slow down to speed up. Yeah. You know, if you slow down a bit, you'll get more done. And even doing that list of the brain dump, as I call it, and looking at it, you realize that um, you weren't really that busy, but you had a, so much up in your head that you just felt overwhelmed and busy from it. And when you split that into maybe two or three categories of priority delegation and, you know, maybe even crossing a few things out, I don't really need to do that. Let's just yeah. get that off the list straight away. So um, you know, if the mother-in-law was coming over for tea and you felt the pressure of having to make a pie, seriously, do you know what? That's off my list. I'm going down to buy one or I'm going to start, I'm going to send somebody else to buy one. Like, yeah, you know, it's like we, we do create, we do create this for ourselves, don't we? Like, and that's the reality that we're creating. So we actually have power and control, as you say, to not have it be that way. You know, as you say, we can, uh, we have loads of resources for me personally. I hired a clean lady to come in. And initially when I started off, I was like, she's not going to clean the floor properly. And she's, and I was like, you know what, Joanne, just get her in and free up a bit of your time, you know, and, and it worked. And it only cost me, I don't know, 40 quid or something like that, yeah. you know. And, uh, and it was great. And it just left me with so much more time and uh, I could sit down and have a cup of tea. And that's really important, as you say, to take a break during the day. And you know, everything just, process in the brain and you know whatever you're doing and um, talk to me about success so you're a success coach so what does success what is success what and I know it's different for everybody but what does it mean to you so success um it's it's a lovely um thing to talk about because success is different to everybody so everyone has their own definition of success and when I have my clients I usually start off in the early stages we talk about values and we talk about visions but what is their definition of success? Um, how will they know they have reached it? How will they know that they're there? And you know, it's quite possible that they're already in their version of success because we tend to think success as external elements, the old fashioned way of describing yeah. which is, you know, do you have the decent house? Do you have the car? Do you have the fancy holiday? Do you have the Brown Thomas clothes or whatever it might be? But what does that really represent? So to me, myself personally, um, I wrote my definition of success a couple of years ago. I hadn't done it before I started down the coaching program. Um, I didn't, you know, I never thought of it that way. I kind of was just like, oh, I've got to get, you know, higher in my job, you know, to actually prove myself that I was worth doing that degree for this sort of thought. But when I sat down and thought about it, I realized the success for me was internally being safe, being calm, having the space to actually feel joy to feel joy with my family, to feel joy with what I do every day and to be to experience gratitude and to be able to use my work to actually help others. So whether it be in the project management of helping um, others create the business um, upgrade that they wanted, because that's what I do uh, commercially, but also to help other people create the business that they want and for them to feel better in their own lives. But the whole external piece of it actually disappeared when I thought about it properly. It was a lot more internal for me to be able to wake up every day and feel happiness and to not wake up in dread. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I can hear in all that as well. So you're talking about and how you're being. So that place of peace and comfort, gratitude, love, all those very high, high vibrational states. Um, and when you're being in that state, it's coming from internal. So what you manifest is coming from that. So it requires you being in that space in order for you to achieve and have your success. So as yeah. you say, it's not coming from the externals and you know, what other people think and all of this, because an awful lot of the time we're doing things based on, you know, to be accepted by people or to be approved by people or to be acknowledged or whatever. Whereas when it comes from within, as you say, and that, place of joy and peace and gratitude and love and um, it's it's so empowering and nothing can get in the way nothing can stop you you know and and I know fear is there we have fear you know pops up and um, but you can you know do stuff in this in spite of fear as well in a lot in a lot of easier kind of a space when you're when you're sitting inside of love and joy because they're very high vibrational um, yeah, and also fear, and this is what I work with my clients on, 
is learning to actually love your fear. Because yeah. fear isn't a bad thing. We don't want to ever get rid of fear because you need to have fear somewhere in case of danger. And fear and danger are two different things. But it's just the, the inside feelings can be, um, I suppose, aligned with danger as well. Yeah. Well, fear is a sign that you're growing. Fear is a sign that you're doing something different. And if we don't want to ever feel fear, then we're just not growing. We're sitting where we are. In the comfort, in our comfort. zone. But if you want to succeed, you want to do something different. Um, whether it be like that you're just going to um, go out for a swim in the ocean with your kids and you've never done that before. You know, that may cause that fear. But it's not to say like, well, if I'm feeling the fear, my God, I better not do it because that must be my stomach trying to tell me something. No, it's not. Your stomach is just trying to get you to not do it because it doesn't want you to die. And when you've got to try to do something <laughs> so different, um, it just, it, it goes mad because it just thinks it's working back from caveman days and it just thinks you're going to get eaten by a tiger coming out of the bushes. Yeah. So you've, it's about learning to love the fear. So if you're not feeling, um, if you're not getting agitated from a bit of scary fear um, every now and again, then you're not doing something different in your business or your life um, to make it like that exciting journey that it should be. Or that so it's it a good be. sign. Yeah, exactly. So loving it. Love your fear. A, <laughs> lovely quote um, by Bob Proctor. And it's faith and fear demand that you believe in something that you cannot see. Yeah. And you have to choose. So fear, we, we, we imagine, you know, there's the worst case scenario, the worst outcome. Um, but we can't see it. We don't know for a fact. And it's the same with faith. So, you know, we say have a leap of faith and, and knowing that something you're going to have a good outcome. So I love, I love that quote by Bob Proctor about faith yeah. and fear. It's, it's kind of, it's the same reasoning behind the two of them. It's, you can't see it, but uh, so, so choose which one you want. So choose faith instead of fear. Faith. Yeah. Choose faith and the fear, the fear that goes with it because okay. you're, you're learning to love it. But actually I did a post um, last week on my Facebook page about what if, what if positive instead of what if negative. So instead Brilliant. of going down the, well, what if I, I, you know, I drown or what if the thing doesn't work out or what if um, the cake gets burnt in the oven or whatever it might be. The day to day things that we kind of go panicky over Yeah. to change that to what if it did work out? What if this is the best thing that ever happened? What if like this creates, you know, the most amazing experience mm. that I get to think back on? So it's just changing. So it's like reframing what you're saying, just saying yeah. it in a positive way instead. Yeah. That's brilliant. And it just, it, it opens you up. If you, if you can imagine thinking, oh, what if the big negative thing? Oh my God, what if, what if? And then, you know, you're all squashed up and restricted. Whereas if you then change it, you know what? What if the sun comes out? What if it's the best party we ever had? What if that job is the best one for me? And you just, you feel the openness. You open yourself up to receiving mm -hmm. rather than closing yourself up restricted. Yeah, that just makes so much sense. And it's so empowering as well to know that we have that choice and choices one of the things that human beings do have. So but I think it's, you know, um, part of being conscious of that as well and being aware of how powerful we are as individuals. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and the choices that, that, that we, we have, you know, like everything is a choice and an opportunity and we need to look at it that way. Something I've seen on one of your Facebook pages uh, about Napoleon Hill and you're talking about um, Think and Grow Rich. Now, I read that book, listened to the audio, listen to it over and over again. It's all about the success principles. It's incredible. But one of the things that was on your page, it was about, the book was written over a hundred years ago and it was written in the times of, you know, poverty and uh, how hard life was back then. And um, I wrote it down. It said, um, never has there been so great an opportunity for practical dreamers as now exists. A new race is about to be run. We now live in a changed world demanding new ideas, new ways of doing things, new leaders, new inventions. I just love that quote. Can you comment a little bit about yeah. how that relates to what we're going through now in these times? So I'm, I'm a bit behind in the whole personal development um, book reading, and I only started a few years ago. So this book that um, I know loads of people have read years ago, I only started about a month ago. Oh, it's brilliant. When I read the first chapter, I was like, Oh my God. And those lines came up. I was like, is he like actually here right now? <laughs> like, I think we were in lockdown about a month at that stage Yeah. because it just, it was like he was talking about now. 
And that was the most powerful thing that he was referring to. It was post Great Depression in America. It was 1937. And um, everything, the whole world had been rattled and America in particular had obviously been turned upside down. And people were scrambling. There was people who were, you know, hit in the depression. There was, but there was people who were um, coming out and developing wonderful businesses as a result of it. So there's there's two ways of, I suppose, looking at things that happen. You either look at it as a, a threat and mm. its victim and why and what are we going to do versus where are the opportunities in this and what can we do and can we like you know, what can we create out of this? Perfect. So what he was talking about, creators and inventors, very much applies to now because we are now in a complete new era and it's impacted the entire world. And it does require outside the box thinking. It does require new norms. And what I suppose I think upsets a lot of, um, or puts people into worry is the fact that we had a world for quite a few decades where there was no impact um, you know, we were tipping away, we were doing all these wonderful things and technology and we all had rhythms and it was, everyone had a comfort zone. The world was in a sort of a comfort zone. Yeah, there was things happening like, um, you know, I suppose waste and ozone and, and all of that. But this, I suppose, is the biggest thing and it has rocked everybody because nobody, again, it's back to the, when something different happens, your body goes into fight or flight. Yeah. Um, so whether you want to change or not, it was, it's been forced on you. So you can either, you know, remain the victim of the, why did this happen to us now? And why can't we go back? Or we can see it as something to grow from, learn from, be part of the next book that gets written in 10 years time the about chapter, how it's developed, yeah. how it's developed in that sort of way. So. Yeah, it's, it's just incredible. And even, you know, um, when adversities happen to us in life, um, you know, on a smaller scale, like in the family dynamics or in a job situation or whatever, um, I suppose that message really could come down to look, look at these um, things that are happening, these stops as an opportunity for change, as you say. And change is not always a bad thing. It's one thing is ending, a new door is opening. And sometimes we need to as you say, it's growth, it is growth, and we have to evolve, we're evolving and we're learning and, you know, all this throughout our life, so not only in, you know, in all the different aspects of our life, family, our, our learning, our spirituality, our jobs, relationships, you know, it's, it's there in, in yeah. all aspects of our lives, so yeah. it's a really important message to, to embrace that and not be afraid of change and realize or see the opportunity, because not a lot of us don't see opportunities. Yes. Yeah, and there's a lot of opportunities out there, but it does require, you know, sitting and thinking and it requires being present. Yeah. It requires like just, okay, so here we are now. You know, yes, we were happy before, it, but, you know, before has now gone. So now we're here and then we have the future. So what can we do with the now that will create the next step for oh, tomorrow it. and the next step for tomorrow? Yeah. But it's also important to say, Joanne, that, you know, would any change, whether it be a personal family, um, thing that has happened um that has created this impact of change or whether it's the big world thing that you know we do feel the feelings of annoyance yeah. you know it's it's not fairy dust to be sprinkled oh okay let's just be positive and happy yeah. and move on you know there is annoyance there there is a bit of anger there there is frustration and it's important to feel that and you know note it and get it out of it get it out of your system it's not good um you know especially say in, in family situations too just pack it all away and just say, oh, it'll be grand. So we're just going to learn from this. It'll be grand. No, you know, get get the emotions out because, you know. Because they're um, there. They're, they're really it out and, and if shout you ignore out. them, the resistance. Exactly. You know, you know yeah. and, and then, and then when you're ready, when you've dealt with your emotions part of it, Brilliant. then move on. Brilliant. That's just incredible. Fiona, I could talk to you all day about this. It's just incredible. Um, but we're coming to the end of the podcast can you tell us how people can find you, where they can find you? Yes. So I have um, a Facebook page. So I'm called, my business is called Inspire Action Success. Um, I have a Facebook page, a uh, business page called that. Um, I also have a personal page, Fiona Brennan. Um, I've just created a new Facebook group called Generating Success for the Ambitious Woman Entrepreneur, uh, or Female Entrepreneur, sorry, Generation Success. And I'm just launching that now. 
And that's going to be where I'm going to do loads of live training. I'm going to do lots of information there to help people. So I'm focusing on people who, women who want to move from employment or maybe have left it already and want to create the business mm. that um, they desire or who already set up and want to up level and get it, um, I suppose, to a higher level of success. Um, so that is, that is there and I'm going to be launching it um, over the next few days properly on my Facebook page. And then I also have a website called inspireactionsuccess.com. Okay, great. Can you send me those links and I'll put all those links in the show notes so people can find you there as well. So Fiona, God, I'd love to stay on and talk to you (laughs) for another little bit. But listen, Fiona, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate taking the time out and uh, and we'll talk to you soon. That's great. And thank you and best of luck to all of your podcasts. They're absolutely brilliant, Joanne. Ah. I love listening to them. Lots of learning in them for me. So thank you. That's what it's all about, empowering people and families. (laughs) Thanks a million, Fiona. We'll talk to you soon. No worries. Take care. Bye.